good day. Welcome to another edition of Inside Putnam Valley Schools. Eric Gross, your host, along with Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Fran Wills. And Fran, good seeing you. Good seeing you, too. Exciting yeah. things are happening in the Putnam oh, Valley School District. Constantly. The budget is right around yes. the corner. We're going to talk to Jill Figuerella about that. Mm-hmm. We're talking about a coach of the year for the entire region. Brian Burrow is going to stop by talk about athletics. Our good friend from the Putnam Valley Elementary School, Margaret Podesta, will be here, along with the administration from the middle school and high school. So it's a jam-packed program. Yes, it is. It's a way, at the end of the year, to sort of culminate with seeing the kinds of things we're doing here and that we continue to do. And the end of the year is, is particularly exciting with the graduations, the honor societies, you know, all the final year celebration. We had a great girls in sports day. I'm sure Brian may have mentioned mm-hmm. that. may mention that in, in uh, today's... Uh, show and you know we we love to see the kids just expressing themselves in a variety of ways and showing what they've accomplished during the year. And it, for administrators, for teachers, for bus drivers, secretaries, you name it, a new beginning will be taking place in the Putnam Valley School District. Sixteen people, a total of three hundred years. And right, 300 years in public education will come to a close in just a couple of weeks. Yes, we have uh, quite a list of retirees, and we celebrated them uh, a couple of weeks ago. We have um, a monitor at the elementary school, Anne Marie Barry, uh, Sandy Burstell, who's a bus driver, two of our teachers at the middle school, Joanne Burns and Jerry Carlin, both well known names in the school district. Um, and Jerry has hosted the variety shows and has been a, an officer of the uh, Putnam Valley Teachers Association. Joanne, a very um, active teacher of ELA in the middle school. And we have uh, Marie Gabari, who is the uh, secretary or the professional administrative professional at the middle school. Ray Gardner, bus driver, Carolyn Heller, who has worked in the guidance office for years uh, and has uh, led many students toward their college uh, education through her assistance to the guidance counselors. Christine Medina, bus driver. Fanny Mandeli, who is a teacher assistant. Conchetta Naida, a teacher assistant. Rosemary Paese, teacher assistant. Mercedes Perez, a monitor. Cynthia Plesher, a teacher assistant. Flora Racanelli, the art teacher at the middle school, very expressive and has helped many students find their uh, approach to visual arts and to help them express themselves in that way. Lynn Sharp, a teaching assistant who has really, uh, this year, helped us tremendously with her uh, assistance in the new Mandarin program that we're offering at the middle school. Grace Stilson, a mechanic for so many years here on our buses and uh, again, someone that most people don't know, but who has contributed mightily to literally making the buses move every day, <laughs> making sure we're we're on the road. And we also had a 10-year celebration of Christina Casey, who is an outstanding uh, special education teacher at the middle school. So it's been quite, it was quite a celebration the other night. Well, again, we wish the retirees the best of luck. We wish the new tenure gal the best of luck as well. Yes. Many more years to come. And, and I like what you said, uh, Eric, about um, new beginnings, too, mm-hmm. because, you know, we, we look forward to our new uh, employees, our new associates coming on board, our new teachers, our new teaching assistants. Um, you know, we, we know that there's always the next window to open, the next door to open, and, you know, we find new ways for everyone to express themselves. We're going to talk about this gal at our mm-hmm. next program, the year-end show. Of course, Dr. Fran Wills is retiring as well, and we'll talk to the new uh, superintendent-elect coming in, Jeremy, Yes. get his plans for the new mm-hmm. school year, and it mm-hmm. uh, must be exciting for you, too. Yes, it's, it's exciting to think about, again, for me, that yeah. door opening again in my journey. And I've been in education for 50 years. And uh, I've learned, I think, a lot uh, that I would like to share in different ways. Okay, we'll talk about that next month. You stay tuned. Well, the budget is right around the corner. Jill will be here in a matter of moments. But one thing that we talked about with Jill 
there's a lot of voter complacency. People think, well, why do I have to bother to vote? The budget's up only less than 1%. Mm-hmm. But you encourage people to get out and do their civic duty, get out and vote. It's, it's important also to, as, a, as a lesson to our children yeah. uh, about the importance of taking part in what is really a precious right uh, to have a say. And um, we are very conscious of trying to encourage everyone to to be there to have that to have their statement to to make a statement um, in whatever way they feel is right for them, but at least to show that they care uh, that we care about our, our our right to vote and make it happen. Voting takes place, by the way, on the twenty first of the month from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the Putnam Valley Elementary School. Jot that information down. What else is going on in the administrative circles in Putnam Valley? Well, we, we had a um, very special um, procedure for a search for a director of curriculum instruction. Mm. And I sent something out to the community yesterday. Um, Dr. Luft and I uh, were very pleased that after um, a very lengthy and thorough search that uh, Jen- uh, Jeanette Mistretta, our current assistant principal at the elementary school, mm. will move into this uh, position of director of curriculum instruction. Uh, Jeanette has been an, a very, very effective uh, assistant principal, but more than that, she has shown herself to be dedicated to student achievement and accomplishment, and she has built exceptional relationships with our teachers who are very supportive uh, of her entering this new position. Uh, Those relationships are precious uh, because it's without the relationship with teachers, you cannot really succeed in making change in any culture in any school district. Um, And any types of higher expectations for everyone depend on those relationships. So we're all pleased. We'll meet Jeanette in next month's program also. Yes. Okay. Yes. The promise. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Let's take a break. Say hi to Jill Figuerello, the treasurer of the Putnam Valley Schools. Let's learn a little bit more about the upcoming budget vote. Jill Figuerello, the treasurer of the Putnam Valley Schools, welcome to the program. It's budget time in the Putnam Valley School District, and the exciting news this year, the budget, by the way, totals $51.6 million, but the exciting news is that the budget increase is less than 1%. How did you guys do it? Right. So, well, you know, we are kept to our tax cap um, environment that uh, all school districts try to stay within from year to year to afford the voters, uh, you know, the STAR program and their tax relief uh, credit for the year. So our budget vote, as you know, is on May 21st, and we're encouraging voters to come out. Uh, we feel we've uh, put out a responsible budget this year. Uh, as you mentioned, under point under 1% at 0.75%. Um, I think that's a pretty commendable um, history with our budget as well. Um, we've been able to average over the past five years um, a 0.67% um, to change in the um, in the budget, so I think that that um, is something we should be proud of as a school district. And uh, our tax levy change is about one point nine percent. So over last year, we were going to see some change in that, uh, but we've again been able to stay under the cap. Uh, some of this is due to savings that have occurred with retirements. We have a number of people retiring. We have. Uh, 16 people, um, and that is including teachers and some staff. Um, and also we've had some lower pension rates um, that the state has uh, placed on the not only the, the, the teachers, but also the, um, the, the CSEA, the um, employees retirement system. So in, both in conjunction have allowed us to have some, you know, st- stability in the budget. And we were able to preserve programs because of it and not go out and look for that money from the taxpayers uh, and and have additional taxes uh, that were over and above what the tax cap allowed. We hear a lot out in the news these days about the STAR program. People should pay your taxes up front. You get reimbursed from the state. Shouldn't you? Tell our viewers what the latest news are. Right, so STAR um, is going to be seeing some many changes. Um, we're going to see many changes in the STAR program. And what you need to know could be different than what your neighbors need to know. Um, 
And I think that has to do with eligibility. Uh, primary residence remains the same. Um, income levels are changing. Um, they're between two hundred and fifty and five hundred thousand dollars. If you're over that, and you're still eligible because you have a primary residency, um, you automatically get what they call a refund check now, rather than getting a credit on your tax bill. So this could cause some financial changes for you and some something for you to have to look at um, your finances to determine whether or not, um, you know, how it's going to affect you and how it's going to, um, you know, going forward, it's going to be effective this September. So in September, it's coming quick. It's three months away. So mm -hmm. if you didn't know about this before now, it may be somewhat of a burden for you to come up with those funds. So you need to really go on the website. You need to check to see what those um, requirements are going to be. And if you were looking to uh, register for the STAR program in, to receive the refund check, you have to let the assessor know. You need to go register online to get that um, reimbursement check. And what you might be looking at if you register to get the check is to remember that you're going to have to pay that money out first, as you mentioned. And the amount of money, by the way, is $468. Right. So that, that amount that you'll have to come up with prior to receiving your refund is an additional $1,268. And until you pay the bill, you know, you may not see the refund. So I don't know what the timing will be for the state, whether they will send it to you prior to the due date for a tax bill. No in the state. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a good chance that it could come either way. Yeah. So I don't want to make any promises to anyone right. to say it's going to come before your tax bill is due. And um, you need to be prepared for that. It's, it's, a, it's an expenditure that you may not have been counting on. Um, and it's just new information that's been provided to us in the last month. I've tried to talk about it at our board meetings and our board meeting videos that have that I've spoken about mm -hmm. these changes and the budget are all on our website, um, www.pvcsd.org. And there are also um, some links there on the front page to the STAR program changes, to the budget information, line-by-line -line budget information. Um, that's available to everyone to watch. So. One thing we want to encourage people out there to get out and vote. You know, people have become complacent when there's, quote, no major issues, when budgets are being kept in check, and they say, nah, what's the sense? You want people to get out and vote. Right. Well, we're seeing that trend, um, and it's across all school districts uh, with the tax cap and districts staying um, within that tax cap. Uh, the voters are not feeling the need to... Uh, be the budget watchers, you know, be go out. But it's important for you to come out and vote. That's the only way we can maintain the programs is to have um, a positive result with our budget. And if we don't, then there's a contingent budget and those things can change. So the offerings are there. The, the budget is a good one this year and it is maintaining programs that we that we have had in place and put in place for um, for our students to um, succeed. And we're giving them a lot of opportunities. And if we can continue to do that and stay within the tax cap, that's what our goal is as a school district. The budget brochures are available online. They are. A complete review of the budget line by line, the various the administration costs, the instructional programs, everything right here. Get it right online, pick up a copy at the administrative office. Correct. And the information's out there. So we encourage you to get out and vote. Again, May 21st, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the Putnam Valley Elementary School. Right. Jill? I'm always available for questions, comments, um, anything. Email jfigurella at pvcsd.org. And also um, available every day during the week for any questions. Um, we... You know, we're here if people have those questions. We're also going to be appearing at our town board meeting um, coming up soon uh, this month uh, to also present the budget and talk about any um, concerns or um, that, that that residents might have regarding the budget or STAR program. We thank you. And thank you. Jill Figuerella, Fran and I will be right back. You know, it's truly amazing that budget, the numbers like that, less than 1%. It's incredible. Yes. yes, it is. And especially with the tax cap, it is. Yeah. It's, it's very, very challenging. But again, 
Jill is such a fine fiscal manager and a planner that we've been able to achieve great things um, with very careful fiscal monitoring and accountability. That's what we're about. And um, I know that Dr. Luft has a very strong view on this matter as well. And okay. very yeah. active in his role in working on the budget for next year, too. Well, let's visit some of the various administrators in the school. But before we do that, we have a champion cheerleading coach. Yes, we do. Regina Albano, who has been nicknamed Coach of the Year. And we're very proud of our team. Regina, welcome. Did you ever meet a Coach of the Year? You heard me right. Regina Albano, congratulations. Thank you. Regina's been around quite some time, 35 years plus. Regina is a family and consumer science teacher and a high school special ed teacher. But the big news today is that Regina was recently named as Coach of the Year for the Westchester Putnam Duchess Rockland Cheerleading Coaches Association. Wow. That's making it feel so wonderful. It does. It does. Thank you. How? Why? How, what did you get involved in cheer? Did you cheer when you were in high school? I, I did cheer in high school. I was a cheerleader for Lakeland High School yes. from 7th and 8th grade through high school. Yeah. And then during college, I volunteer coached, and then I've been coaching since I graduated college. Why is cheerleading such a great endeavor for young women and men, for that matter? Um, well, now, especially, it's extremely athletic. You need a lot of athletic ability for the stunting. You need a lot of strength and coordination. And now tumbling is a huge part of cheerleading. So it's it's not what it used to be where it was just uh, supporting your team and supporting the school spirit. Um, it's a lot about, um, it's all like winter especially, which is um, the season that we do so great in, is strictly competitive. Where do these competitions take place? Um, most of them are at local high schools. Um, many of them host one. We host one every year. Um, so we do about 10 competitions a year. And now that we are officially a sport with uh, New York State, we actually have official like sectionals. Um, and then if you win sectionals, you move on to states. And uh, last couple of years it was in Syracuse. This past year it was in Rochester. And Pum Valley Cheerlead is a great young lady. Any guys, by the way? Not this year, but we've had multiple uh, guys in the past. Okay. We've had a few, um, about four or five teams that were co-ed. But they're special. They're really so interested in this. They love it. They do. They. It's a special passion that they have for it, and they really, they'll wake up and say, I thought about it all night, or I'm looking at routines online, and they just can't get enough of it. How many um, members comprise the team? This year, we had 20 on our team. We are considered a large team. So if you're 17 or more members, you're large. If you're 16 and under, you're small. And we choose to go large right now because we want to keep as many kids involved as we can and still have a good program. And we have modified cheerleaders and JV cheerleaders. So we, we have a strong program of over 50 kids. You really enjoy this. I do. I do. <laughs> you can it's tell. my life. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell. Many more years to go. Um, a few. <laughs> yes, I definitely would say a few um, more years. Yeah, I must keep you in good shape, too. It does. And I do help them. I do physically stunt with them and spot them for tumbling. So, you know, definitely gives me exercise and keep in shape. Well, wish you the best. Thank you very Our much. Our cheerleader of the year, Regina Albano. Brian Burrow, the athletic director in the Putnam Valley Schools. Whenever I'm with Brian, I feel healthy. Oh, ah, good. That's, That's good. Like, well, so, you know, this guy's out there on the field and working with the youngsters and the faculty and the community. Great year in Putnam Valley Sports this year. We had a good year. We have a lot of new initiatives that we've been working on. We have a brand new health and wellness website that we just launched. And uh, we're hoping that it's a landing spot for students and community uh, so that they don't have to just Google different topics, but they can go to one central location uh, where things are vetted through the health and wellness committee, and um, it'll give them quality information there. So. We talked to Regina a short time ago, Regina Albano, the coach of the year. The cheerleading team won all kinds of accolades and awards, many other teams as well. Yes, we had the first ever section title game for football. We had four section one winners for wrestling. And as Regina said, we had the four P for the section title for cheerleading, as well as second in New York State, which is a an incredible accomplishment. That's really yeah, for a small school like Putnam Valley. Yeah, yeah. It's just wonderful that people are so in tune and active like that. Absolutely. We have, uh, we've been navigating another rainy spring now. And uh, 
So each of the teams are playing back to back pretty much every week, but they're getting it done. You know, um, being very patient about getting games back in. And uh, we are hosting the league championships for track and field on the 9th. So if, if you're in the area, come mm-hmm. out to that and uh, check the school app for our weekly game schedules. The school year is winding down, mm-hmm. but I'm sure with athletics, you are planning for the next season as well. Sure. Footballs and other fall sports already starting again. We are more. almost done scheduling fall, and we're working. We're starting to work on winter at this point. Really? Yeah, it's incredible. Almost a year in advance. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Wow. So things are promising in Putnam Valley. I think so. Yeah. Okay. We thank you. Thank you so much, Eric. Brian Burr, always a pleasure. Margaret Podesta is the principal of the Putnam Valley Elementary School. And how have you been? A long time. I know. Very well. Thank you. Good to see you, Eric. Well, well, Margaret's back on the program. Now, we do a lot of talk about high school activities and middle school activities, but it all starts at the elementary level. It does. The foundation of the learning. And it's been a great year. Wonderful. It's gone by very quickly. It's been great. Sustainability. What's going on there? Well, we have teachers leading a sustainability festival for the mm. first time in our building. Yeah. The whole district has really looked at sustainability with the self initiative. And on June 5th, our school will have the first festival where grades one through four will go through stations outside learning about sustainability, the environment, pond study, solar wind energy, recycling, and of course, a trash free lunch competition. Wow. Yeah. Let's hope the weather straightens out by June 5th. We have a rain date. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. Yeah. No more rain, please, right, please. Exactly. It's Tri County Science Fair is coming up to here. Well, actually, it just happened. Okay. We had our Science Maker Fair for our fourth graders, which we always have. Right. But for the first time, we had 13 fourth graders go to the Tri County Science and Technology Fair at White Plains High School. Mm. One of our high schoolers, Sarah Bross, who's a wonderful science teacher, uh, science student, I should say. She's a senior in the high school. She came to me and said, do you think you'd have elementary students who might be interested in going to this Tri-County Science Fair? Mm. And so their projects had to sit in, fit into different categories, chemistry, the environment, biology. We took 13 of them, and they were outstanding. They competed. They got their excellent and outstanding ribbons. They presented to at least three judges um, in a room by themselves for about an hour and a half. Oh. I mean, these kids really rose to the occasion and made us very proud. That's awesome. Yeah. Anything to do with Mandarin? Yes, as a matter of fact, we're working closely with um, BOCES, right. with Dr. Jim Ryan, we have Lynn Al, Dr. Allen, and also Wendy Lee, who is a teaching assistant who speaks Mandarin. They are working with our kindergartners this year on just a pilot, just an initiative to get into the classrooms, do some, do some music, some art, some um, vocabulary, counting, dancing, and they are starting to learn a little bit of Mandarin. That's so incredible. Five and six-year-olds. Yes, yes, and they pick it up yeah. much more quickly than I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they're learning, and we're going to see how this goes looking into next year as we plan for K and maybe even eventually for first grade. Mm, wow. Yes. What else is going on in school? Let's see. We have a math team for the first time. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mick Coleman, our math AIS teacher, has taken in some strong math students in fourth grade and challenge them to an after-school club where they participate in online and paper and pencil competitions. And of course, our students are doing very well. And um, it's just creating that love of learning and, and you know, the excitement of math learning. It's been a great year. Well, no. It has. We're doing very well, and I'm just so proud of the students and the whole community. You know, from the elementary level right to the middle school and the high school, we say exciting things are happening. In the Putnam Valley That's schools. right. TV rising all the time. All right. Yeah. We thank you. Thank you so much. Margaret Podesta. Well, they don't call Sandy and Trary the cheerleader for nothing. Sandy, of course, the principal here at Putnam Valley High and wearing her Marist College shirt today. Why Marist? Because today is college sweatshirt day, so all the seniors who've gotten accepted and chosen their colleges are wearing the sweatshirt of their school. So we're taking lots of pictures, congratulating the kids. And then we also sent 160 kids over to the BOCES College Fair, I think the largest amount of students from any school for the second year in a row. So we're really impressed that the kids are interested in researching where the best college is for them. And most importantly, we're so excited because we are the first school in Putnam County to bring in the IB program. IB stands for? 
International Baccalaureate Program. And this handsome gentleman to your left is? This is Matt Mello. This is our IB coordinator who's helped along the way implementing the whole program and organizing it and facilitating training and uh, all sorts of work with the teachers to get ready. Matt, why is this such a coup for Putnam Valley? Uh, I think because uh, we're, we're taking a step forward in education. Uh, what the IB program allows you to do is, or allows the students to do, is to uh, uh, take a lot more ownership of their own learning. And I think in this day and age, uh, when you're competing against so many different things out there, our students are, uh, to be able to direct their learning in an area that they want to uh, gives them a great advantage, especially moving forward into uh, you know, what they're going to do after high school. And of course, it's international as well. Uh, yes, and that's one really uh, yeah, unique aspect of the program that kind of sets it a, a, apart from, you know, like an AP program, uh, the international aspect. So every course that you're going to take is going to bring in this, what they call international mindedness. Uh, and that, you know, is trying to teach uh, students to look at what's going on around the globe, uh, you know, in, you know, mathematics, history, uh, and languages and things like that. How do students get involved in the program? Uh, well, students, uh, there's, the, the program is kind of uh, intricate in the sense that uh, it's got a couple different pathways. Uh, one of the things, students can declare themselves as a diploma candidate. Um, and if they do that, then there's uh, a pretty rigorous course of study that they'll take. Uh, they'll take uh, courses in the six group areas and they'll have uh, what we call the core, which is a, an extended essay, uh, a creativity activity and service aspect to it. Uh, and what we call theory of knowledge course that they'll have to take. So it's very involved. So there will be some students that will declare themselves as diploma candidates, and then all other students uh, can enroll in uh, IB courses of their choosing. And if student interested, should he or she contact their guidance counselor? Uh, yes, uh, they can contact me or they can contact their guidance counselor uh, to look at the different courses that are involved. Sandy and I, uh, over the course of the last two years, have been meeting with uh, different students, different classes, uh, to give them uh, a better understanding of what the program's like uh, so that they'll be more informed when they want to go and make decisions. And before Sandy runs away, Sandy, you must be thrilled too that the IB program is coming to Putnam Valley. I am so ecstatic. What I love is that the teachers have been so passionate about it, really value the program, and have been working as a team to implement it and to review their curriculum to make appropriate changes and really help to develop the whole child and really look at how to and intellectually stimulate the children and get them better prepared for college. And something also exciting taking place at the Putnam Valley High School. You can see behind us here, it says NHS inductees, National Honor Society, quite a group of ladies and gentlemen. Last week we had a lovely ceremony organized by Lisa Penta, which is our National Honor Society advisor, and we inducted, I would say, at least 30 members 43 members to the society and it was just a very proud night and yesterday we also had JC Good come and do a great assembly for 11th and 12th graders on the dangers of distracted driving and students were very moved by the assembly and really everybody signed a pledge to not text and drive which most importantly we want everybody safe. Well, we talked to Putnam Valley High School, we spoke to the elementary principal, we talked to the athletic director and now it's time for the middle school. We'll be right back. As promised, Travis McCarty is with us, Fran, the principal of the uh, Putnam Valley Middle School. And the kids are on their way. They're getting excited at 5 o'clock in the morning. When are they leaving? Yes. So our eighth grade uh, middle school students will be leaving for Washington, D.C. on Wednesday the 8th through Friday the 10th of um, May. And we're looking forward to it. This is something that hasn't been done in Putnam Valley in quite some time, I understand. Yes, the last time we went to Washington, D.C., it was uh, 2001. And uh, a lot of former students and now adults in the district have mentioned what a great time that they had in Washington, D.C. So we looked into bringing it back for our students. You know, friend, it's one of those memorable occasions. Yes. My young, my, my children are in their mid to late 40s now, and they still talk about their trip to Washington, D.C. And, and I talk about mine. Hunter High School, when I was there, 30 of us who were in the Honors Social Studies program, 
went to Washington, D.C., and I was fortunate enough to meet JFK when he walked out of the Foreign Relations Committee, and we had a chat with, uh, with, with our president wow, that's... You know, before he was president, and he was very impressive. Uh, all, it's an all-girls school that I went to, so you can imagine the uh, response yes. from the students when they met JFK. It was very exciting. I'm not going to meet any presidents this time, but what will the children be doing? Sure. So uh, the Wednesday evening that we do arrive, um, we're going to see Arlington National Cemetery, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, a um, little bit of the Pentagon. Um, and then the Wednesday, uh, I'm sorry, the Thursday after, we're uh, chock full. We're going to see Martin Luther King Jr., um, FDR, the Capitol Building, as well as um, the Korean and Abraham Lincoln Memorial. And then the Friday, we're actually seeing all of the Smithsonian's. So a very jam-packed three days um, of educational learning. And we're hoping that students take lots of pictures and uh, communicate the trip with the students that are still in the middle school to inspire even more interest in the future. And this is so important for these young people, for many of them, it will be their first time away from home. It will, it will, and we've had parent meetings um, to help uh, calm some of the fears of parents, but it is the first time for many to be away, but we've got a Remind app where we will communicate back and forth, and again, children can bring their cell phones so they can communicate back and forth with their parents as well. That'll be an exciting trip. Oh, I'm so excited about this. I'll be in contact constantly, I'm sure. <laughs> and there are yes. uh, parent volunteers and faculty members going as well. We do. We have five chaperones. Um, Mrs. Mistretta from the elementary school, uh, Mrs. Lutz from the middle school, Mr. Turner and Mr. Carlin from the middle school as well, and then myself, of course. Of course. <laughs> wouldn't miss it for the world. I wouldn't. Looking uh, forward to it. Okay. Well, we thank you. Thank you. Middle school in Washington, D.C. trip coming up right around the corner. Going to be exciting times for the young people here at Putnam Valley. So, Frank, Jeremy Luff, the uh, superintendent elect, has joined us. Welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. Um, big, exciting things are happening in Putnam Valley. Yeah, it's definitely an exciting time of year for us. Um, our sports teams are starting to hit sectionals in the playoff time. This is a prime season for our cultural arts programs, full of different concerts going on. And it's an exciting time academically as well. We were beginning our testing program. We're actually looking forward to next year, filling positions, bringing in new teachers. Um, we recently hired a new director of curriculum instruction. We'll be bringing in a new assistant principal for our elementary school. Um, and then really with an eye looking at next year. So. Lots of important things going on. Certainly one of the most important will be our budget vote, which is coming up. So I would encourage everyone to come out and uh, to have their voices heard. But we're, we're winding down this year, but really ramping up for next school year already. That's what happens in yes. May and June, doesn't That's it? That's right. You know, we, we're, we're at the same time that we're finishing up and we're culminating all of our educational experiences. You know, we have our advanced placement tests and our regents and uh, our graduations and honor societies at the same time we are already planning for the following year. Okay. May 21st, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Putnam Valley Elementary School. Mark it down on your calendar. The school budget vote. We encourage you to get out and vote. Jeremy, Van Wills, we thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Inside Putnam Valley Schools. I'm Eric Gross. Until next time. Bye-bye.